let's dive right in. In today's Community Showcase, I will be presenting the work of Michael Aristov. Michael is a grad student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and in the past year, his work has taken a computational turn, which has produced a library of 3D teaching tools for chemistry. These efforts were recently published in the Journal of Chemical Education, which is an excellent resource for those unfamiliar with it, and I've linked that paper for anyone who's interested. What I would like to focus on for this feature, though, is Michael's page on Sketchfab, which features a variety of 3D chemistry resources. There's great variety among these from a chemistry standpoint. Some of my favorites include 3D representations of both atomic and molecular orbitals that you can fully navigate around, along with the 14 standard unit cells, animations of simple rotations around small organic molecules, and even some experimental setups, such as this diamond anvil. My understanding is that using Sketchfab as a hosting platform offers up some benefits for integration in virtual classrooms. I strongly recommend checking out the Sketchfab page, particularly if you're involved in chemistry education and are looking for accessible resources. As a note, when there is a license assigned, it's usually either Creative Commons attribution, share alike, or non-commercial. For a look at what that means, you can consult the relevant CC page here. Essentially, giving credit is the main thing here, and you usually cannot use these for commercial purposes. You also have to indicate or share under the same license if you're going to reuse these models. Again, for more details, you can simply check in with the license. All of that ties into some additional points I'd like to make about Michael's work. Many of the models and animations have been made in response to specific requests made by teachers and students, and they're actively looking for more ideas or subjects to cover. Every model or animation that is made will be created free of charge, and the results will be made publicly available under that same license. So if you or someone you know is a member of the chemistry or chemistry education community and have a sense of what resources would be helpful for you, I've provided Michael's contact information in the description as per his request. I've really enjoyed the ongoing discussion that I've had with Michael about technical aspects of Blender and interfacing it with a variety of software. I'm confident that these conversations are likely to continue and hopefully we'll see some aspects of them translate into the broader Blender and scientific communities. A few final notes here. The work that Michael has been conducting has been done with the research group of John Barry at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I've heard great things about John Barry in chemistry education circles, and I've linked the Barry Group website for anyone who's interested in taking a look at some fascinating, primarily inorganic chemistry work. In the interest of proper disclosure, I'm also mentioning that Michael's work, including the published article, have been funded by the National Science Foundation, the specifics of which are in the video description. And with that, thanks for coming out. If you have chemistry-related models or animations that you think would make valuable resources for teaching, I encourage you to reach out to Michael himself. If you would like to access these resources, check out his page on Sketchfab. If you have suggestions for future community showcases or would like to make a specific Blender-related scientific request, feel free to leave it in the comments and I will do my best to work it into the schedule. Many thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon who help make this channel possible, and until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.